I'm here with the HTP Invertig 251 AC DC and in this video I'm going to go over the advanced DC features that this machine has like double pulse, fast tacking, dynamic arc control and more. This is part of a video owner's manual series and in the previous videos I showed how to set up the machine and how to use the basic TIG welding features and this video will build on what we covered in those. In the following videos, I'll show how to use things like advanced waveform controls on AC, as well as the stick welding capabilities of the machine. Let's take a look at the front panel here and change the settings over to advanced. So press on the gear icon, and in the last video we used basic settings, so we can change that over to advanced so we have all of the options available. Now with the advanced interface, you have several different modes other than your foot pedal to control your amperage with a programmed profile. So let's look at 2T right here. You can use this either with a foot pedal just acting as a switch, or there are some other ways to do it we'll look at in a minute. Now the main settings menu has several more parameters that we can change. So you have your preflow, and this is a chart of what your amperage will do. So when you press the button, it will start at this initial amperage, or if you use a lift start that's live we'll look at in a minute, it will start at that initial amperage. Then after the period of time you set, it will slope up to your set welding current over a period of time until you release your switch and then it'll slope down over that downslope time to this final amperage and hold that for the time you set there. So this can give you really repeatable welds if you're going through a lot of parts or welding on a positioner and you want them to be exactly the same each time or if you don't have the option to use a foot pedal. Now let's look at 4T. This is going to be similar, except in here you don't have quite as many times to set because it'll go to your initial amperage when you press the button, hold there until you release it, and then slope up over this period of time and stay at your welding current with no button pressed. When you press again, it'll slope down over that period of time and hold the final amperage until you release it, at which point it starts the post flow. So it just follows that chart all the way along. Now in spot, you can set it to just have a simple on and off, and this can be useful for repeated tacking. So here, I'll set the time to half a second, and then afterwards, you can set a time off, and it will hold off for that time with your pedal down, and then tack again. Now we'll look at the fast tack mode, and this is available when you're set in TIG spot. And this uses a special pulse to help bridge the gap. So you just select DC and fast tack instead of standard, and again, high frequency start. Now with this setting, you can just simply put your tungsten in place and press your pedal as a switch, and it'll go through a programmed profile to tack, and that pulse helps the material to just bridge together without spreading apart, so you can get nice repeatable tacks. The way I'm using this here is with a four second off time, so it'll tack and then I'm holding my pedal down the whole time, that gives me four seconds to hold a little post flow, reposition, and then it tacks again. And so I get this nice repeatable result all the way along a corner like this. So let's take a look at a feature called dynamic power. Now dynamic power will vary your amperage based on your arc length or based on your voltage, which follows your arc length. This gives you an added level of control without using a foot pedal, and it can add some stability by narrowing up your arc when your arc gets longer. In order to use dynamic power, you need to be in TIG2T, then in your process selection, you'll have a dynamic power option. Now we're going to use a live torch, so lift pipe just uses this as a power supply. Lift Pipe Smart uses the gas solenoid as well, so when you touch the tungsten down, gas will flow and it'll start your profile. Now if you go into the settings menu, you can change the dynamic power size, and this controls how many amps will increase or decrease per change in volts. So let me demonstrate how this works. So notice I'm welding here with a short arc length that would be typical for TIG welding, and it's running right around 130 amps. Now I'll go to a really long arc length to exaggerate this, and you can see how it dropped the amperage automatically down closer to 100 amps, and then when I move back in with a shorter arc length, it increases again. So this gives that added level of control or stability depending on how you want to use it. 
Next, we'll take a look at some of the pulse options that are available on the machine in advanced interface mode. Now, not only do we have pulse that we looked at in the previous video, but now we have a soft pulse and double pulse. Let's look at soft pulse. Now, soft pulse is going to have the same options that you had with regular pulse. So if we go into the pulse menu, you have a frequency, so pulses per second, as well as a peak time and a background amperage. So we can set those just like we did before, but the difference with soft pulse is that it's a slightly softer arc, so it can give you a softer puddle and also reduce some of the harshness of the noise that you get from regular pulse. So here I'm using soft pulse to weld this outside corner joint. This is the same joint that we tacked up earlier and it is running along really well. Now with most TIG welding machines that have pulse, you have to choose between using a high frequency pulse that narrows the arc cone or a low frequency pulse that paces progression. With this, you can actually use double pulse and with double pulse, it does both. It has a high frequency component and a low frequency component as well so that you can narrow that arc cone and you can also pace progression. I think this would be particularly useful on autogenous outside corner joints, but it could be useful in a variety of other situations also. To access this, go into the process menu, select DC and double pulse. Here we'll use high frequency start again, and it's ready to go. Now when we go into the pulse settings menu, there are going to be two pages. So this first one is the low frequency pulse. This would typically be around one pulse per second, but it could be a bit higher if you'd like. And you also have the same peak time and background amperage here. Now keep in mind that this will be doubled when you move into the high frequency settings, where you have the same three parameters and you can set those. So these will happen all the time and it will pulse between that high and low setting. So here's an example of using double pulse on an outside corner joint on mild steel. It could be particularly helpful like this joint on stainless steel where it's very important to control heat input for distortion and to prevent oxidation. There it is as welded with double pulse. Next, let's take a look at the hot start option, which controls a quick burst of current that happens at the start of your arc to give you a nice crisp start. Now, a hot start is common on a lot of different brands of machines to give you a nice crisp start. On this one, you can actually turn it down if you're welding on something very thin or very delicate so that you avoid causing any damage from that. But in general, it's advantageous to just leave it on the automatic setting and set your tungsten size. If you do need to change it, it's just here in the settings menu and you press the button and can turn it up. Typically, if you have it on a very low setting, you need to have a tungsten in very good condition to be able to still have a nice crisp start, but that can be done when needed. So we just looked at the hot start amperage that happens for a very brief period of time when you start your arc. Now the minimum amperage that you can run when you're barely on the foot pedal or you turn the machine all the way down is different from that. So see below here, there's that 15 amps displayed that's small. That's the minimum that it'll be when you're barely on the pedal or when you turn it all the way down. And that's good most of the time, but if you wanna go lower here in the settings menu, you can turn that minimum up or down clear to one amp. Then we can go back into the home screen. This will let you adjust it down lower or when you're barely on the foot pedal, you'll be sitting right at that one amp setting. Well, that covers the advanced TIG welding features, at least for DC on the Invertig 251. In the next video, I'll go over the advanced AC features like independent waveform control and mix AC-DC.